Hi there folks. I want to show you the new tool that was added to Adobe Illustrator in this 2024 version. And that is the super cool and very useful and very nice to use dimension tool. So if you work on packaging or you have to do drawings or you have to measure somebody's drawings here, this tool is fantastic. I'm going to show you how it works. So we have our different types of measurements here, our linear measurement, our angle, and then our radius, as well as our settings. I'm going to show you just how easy this is to use. I'm going to take my measurement, my linear measurement tool here, and I'm going to hover over a path. And once that cursor intersects that path, it shows me what it's going to measure from, it shows me the size. And in order to get this to actually draw the dimensions, I'm now going to click and hold my mouse button. I'm going to pull out from there the distance and the direction that I want to go ahead and have that dimension pop up. And there you go. I've got it. And it automatically puts it on its own layer, which is totally cool. So you can turn these on and off and you can isolate them if you want to. You don't have to go ahead and create your own layer. It does it for you. Well, that's super nice. So I'm going to show you a couple uh, tricks that uh, also happen when you're using the dimension tool here. If I click on this path and click and pull, it's going to bring that dimension right up there for me, which is great. But it's like, why didn't it go ahead and do it to the entire width? Well, I'm going to grab my direct selection tool and you're going to see it goes from point to point on the path. And that's the length of the path that you have there. But that's fine, but I'd like the complete width right here. So that's easy to go ahead and fix. Grab your linear dimension tool. And what you're going to do is you're going to click on the first path. Make sure I land right on that path. And then you can go click on the other path. Now be careful that you get these right in line here because you can see if you start measuring off, you're going to get the wrong measurement. So of course, if I hold down my shift key, shift is going to snap it. So it's going to be a perfect horizontal measurement. And I shift click. And then what I do is I bring my cursor up to where I want it to land. And I simply click and I land it right there. So the dimension shows up. By default, it usually puts a little bit of space. Right now it's two points of space between the measurement markers and the line here. But here you'll notice that it actually runs this over to the exact anchor points where I've actually measured from when I use the tool. So something to think about when you go ahead and do that, but not a big deal. But do keep in mind that when you're working with this, if I grab the linear dimension tool and I come over here and I pull, it'd be like, hmm, what is that? Well, you're going to find out that those are where the points are on the path. So if I click on that, you're going to see exactly that. So that's one of the things that you have to pay attention to when you're using this is where you're measuring from and the number of points that you put on something. Next, we're going to show you the radius tool. And again, this works really well. I'm going to grab my radius measuring tool, click on any circle or arc, and it immediately finds the center, gives me the radius, and all I have to simply do is click once with my mouse, and it lands the measurement and the arrow right from there. Sweet. If I'd like to go ahead and I'd like to do, do the diameter, what I'm going to do is I'm then going to hover over the path, I see my radius, and what I'm going to do is click and hold my mouse and pull in ever so slightly toward the center of my circle or my arc, and that is going to land my diameter. So easy enough to do. Radius, diameter, what fun. When it comes to angles here, again, grab the angle measurement, find any point where you have two lines coming together to form an angle, click, and then drag that mouse in with a mouse button held down, and you're going to land your angles right from there. Now, the one thing, if you have a corner widget on something, it will not measure the angle. The reason why is because it needs that point of inter, uh, intersection for that to measure the angle. So, of course, if you've got that point of intersection, you're going to be able to go ahead and get that angle right from there. But if you don't have that, you will not be able to go ahead and get that. So, make sure you have the right tool. You can see it says, no, it won't do it. But here, it will do it. So, unfortunately, corner widgets don't work. Speaking of corner widgets, I like this tool if I want to go through here and I really just very quickly I want to find out if my radius on my box is the same. I could click on this and go to my properties panel, but if I just go here and I simply click on any one of these corners here, it shows me that the radius is exactly the same. Now I could just hover over it and read it. I don't need to click, but I can see that radius, which is really pretty cool. Okay, so 
not not a bad feature right there. I, I like it a lot. So of course, if I wanted this radius right here, I could go in and I can just grab this radius and right there, it just gives me that radius going right in there. I clicked and pulled a little bit, which then gave me the entire diameter of what would be the circle if I wanted to draw something like that right there. But check this out. This is super cool. When I change the radius by using my corner widget, the measurement changes too, which is so, so, so cool. And you can do that with anything. If I came in here and I wanted to change this size and I wanted to make it smaller, I could go ahead and I could reduce it down and the dimensions move with it. So when you move something or scale something, that is fantastic. When I was drawing this, one of these legs was ever so slightly narrower than the other one. Well, I can just land the dimensions wherever they may be, and then I can simply see exactly what I need it to be. And when I change it, then I don't have to worry about anything at all. So if I go in, click there, shift click there, and then land that, there's my height. And if I decide that I'd like to go in and I'd like to make this taller or shorter, I could then just go in and I could move this and nudge this up or down. And I'm doing it to three decimal places, which in order to make that happen, I would go into my settings here and I would go under general and I set my keyboard increment to be as many decimal places as I would set in my preferences for this tool. So if I wanted to go to three decimal places and I needed to have it that precise, I just set my keyboard increments and that way when I move any of my lines that I have directly selected, this will allow me to get it to three decimal places. To change those things, you can go to your settings and you can control the units here, um, whatever you want to measure as, the precision, no decimal places all the way up to three. You can go foot and inches as well. And the scale, if you're doing something like one to four or one to eight or something like that, you know, you're building a billboard and you always build at one eighth scale. This is cool. It'll actually give you the dimensions as if it's full size and you can build it at one eighth scale. Line weight dimensions, type of line, solid, dashed, or dotted, and then of course the different arrow styles that you can choose from the scale of the arrows, the extensions lines, the distance that they set off of what you're measuring right there, font, family, style, point size, color, and then the position of the um, dimensions above or below, and then left, center, or right justified there. So pretty cool. Definitely give it a shot because it's fun.